Hey guys, Armor Gun here tonight. We got a Mark 14, that is to say a Springfield M1A or a Springfield M14, a Norinco M305, whatever you guys have, whatever is it, this, this pattern of rifle, we've got this thing in an EBR, Sage International EBR chassis that stands for Enhanced Battle Rifle and that basically takes your, your Springfield M1A and turns it into a Mark 14 minus the uh, full auto selector, though the, the stock is cut for it. So today we're going to disassemble this thing, and if you guys are checking it out because you want to learn how to install your own Sage EBR stock, just stick with us. We're going to disassemble the whole thing first, do a basic field strip on the, uh, in this case, Narinco M305, and then we're going to throw it all back together again. Very simple to do. You just need an Allen key of the corresponding size, which in this case is a four millimeter. So let's, uh, let's get into this. We'll take the mag out. We'll prove it clear and then kick things off. Let's uh, drop our trigger group, which just to get a Allen key to this little hole in the back, you're just going to pry that open or basically just, yeah, basically you just got to pry it open. And then this whole thing pops right out, throw that on safe just so this doesn't come apart on you. You need to have the trigger in the cock position to get that thing out nicely. So just do this. Now you can set this thing aside. Maybe uh, hit it with a bit of oil while you're at it. Let that uh, sit over there. And then we start taking off screws. For starters, let's take off this hand guard because you're gonna need to get at, I've gone ahead and loosened all the screws ahead of time. So we're gonna pop these guys out because there is one screw underneath that mounts in right down in there. So you guys gotta grab that guy while you're here. So we'll go and set these off to the side. Coming to the front, the handguard here, there's screws in there. There's five of them holding in this top piece. So we're gonna pop all those out. This whole upper hand guard pulls right off and then your gun should come out nice and smooth. It's probably going to be a little bit snug because there are some spots in here that are pretty tight fitting but just go on and pry that up a bit and then she'll come right out. So the whole thing just lifts right out of that chassis there with a little bit of persuasion. There we go. So there's your basic, you know, barreled action. This one has an 18.5 inch barrel and there's your Sage EVR stock. So we'll finish with the field strip on this guy then we'll come back and take a little bit closer look at the stock here. All right, so, all right, and we're back here. So I just took a quick pause, went through it all and made sure that I knew how to do this here before uh, getting, in, getting into it just so I don't waste your time and so I know all the tips and tricks for doing this. So, for starting this thing off, we're gonna take out the recoil assembly first. Now, if you look really closely here, there's a little hole in there and there actually should be a little roll pin sticking out. Mine, however, is missing. So, what I'm going to do is take a really small Allen key that fits in there. You're gonna push in. Actually, let's, uh, let's jump the camera in here a little bit. And even a little bit more. All right, so we're gonna push in. As you can see, now we're gonna we're gonna move this out, and then this will all come out. Now keep pressure on this because this is gonna want to jump away from me here. It's got a good bit of pressure on it. Let the recoil system all come out. Now. We're gonna roll the op rod back. We're gonna basically, the, the bolt can go all the way back home. Okay, so once you have it all the way to the back, you're gonna notice there's a disassembly notch right here. So this is kind of tricky. You can see the corresponding groove on the back of the carrier. You need to lift up and then this pulls out and then you can kind of lift it away and kind of finagle it 
out of there. Okay, and then this is just going to come out of there. And there you have your op rod out. Now, the bolt. Now, the bolt can be a little funky as well. You kind of just wiggle it out, and I make it look super magically easy. Um, getting it in is a little trickier. So just keep in mind, you never want to force anything. You just kind of got to wiggle it. Wow, I've literally never had it go in and out that easily. But there you have it. So, wow, I need to, I, this is on camera, I can't believe it. Um, anyways, we have this here, this is good. And that's basically your gun. Now, looking forward at this piston assembly here, as long as this piston is, is sliding down of its own accord, you don't really need to maintain it. Mine is a little sluggish there, so probably I could, I could crank this off, and clean it out. You just crank this off up here, pull the guts out, clean it up, should be good. So that's that's the gun. That's the gun. Now I'll go over some quick cleaning and greasing tips, and then we'll throw it back together and uh, continue on. All right, so cleaning and lubricating. Main points to focus on, we'll look at the bolt first. The bolt's got this little roller guy. That's important. Your bearing surfaces are important. Your locking lugs are important. So you can see anywhere the finish is rubbed away, those are the areas you want to hit with some grease. So basically along here, along this little edge here, this back edge, these front locking lugs, and of course the roller bearing, your bolt extractor, and a little bit on here as well. And that's going to basically do it for your bolt. You can also lube it up with some, with some uh, oil as well. Going to your receiver, basically again you want to focus on the areas that see wear, and this gun has a lot of areas that see wear. Some guys are super anal about their M1As as well. Brownells actually has a good video that kind of goes like a four part series in disassembly, cleaning, lubricating, and then reassembly. They get really in detail and they show you all the little spots. Um, however, suffice it to say, you want to get some, gr some grease down in these grooves. You can see mine is still greased there. You want to get some grease on this here. This is the upper surface where the bolt rides and also in the locking recesses just basically where you have your main wear points. Um, and that's gonna be it for that. When you're gonna get a bit of grease, or sorry, a bit of oil on this surface here. Just again, because this is constantly seeing, seeing wear. And that travels inside this circular area in there. So I'm just going to get that guy a little bit. And I've been told that if you give your spring a little bit of uh, oil, that's nice and lubed up, it's going to decrease friction over the op rod, and you're just going to, it's going to feel like a smoother action. So that's, that's basically about it. Let's, uh, let's start throwing this guy back together now. So kicking things off first, we've got to get our bolt in, which I proved earlier was just magically simple. It's not always that way. I'm just going to tip her back. And I'm, I'm sure, oh, no, there we, there we go. All right, we're, we're in, have it all the way back. Now get your, your rod up in the front there. You kinda gotta rotate this on. You gotta get the little, actually, I'll just show you here. Exactly what that little receiver notch looks like. It's this guy up here. I guess you also wanna get some grease inside here because that's where that, the roller on the bolt interfaces and this little disassembly guy right there as well. So we're going to get that in there, roll this up. Basically just try and get it to roll up in there without everything all falling apart. And this is the, the single probably trickiest part other than getting the bolt in, is getting all this to line up. There we go, okay. A little bit of wiggling, a little finagling, and we're good. So that's good to go now. You can have the bolt go home. Flip the receiver back upside down. We're going to, this is the proper orientation. You want, you know, the, the, the angled side, the longer side down right now while the receiver is upside down. So we're gonna push that inside here. And once again, for me, I need to have my little Allen key at the ready. That guide rod and the action spring all back inside the op rod. Just push down. I suppose my thing is probably blocking me now. 
It is. So I'll push that out of the way. And just like that, it kind of clicked all back in. Basically, get that down and then get this guy back in, which I don't believe it is yet. It's not. It's a bit of wiggling, there we go. Okay, so we're all back in, we're all back together. This is all good. That's uh, that's your barreled action back together, guys. So she's good to go. Now let's grab our, our chassis. I'll take another quick look at this thing here. We've got our telescopic function. Got our cheek riser. Just giving you guys a bit of a bit of a view of all of this. Kind of neat. You can see the pick rails. You need to adjust from the inside. You can move them a little bit. All right. So that's let's do it for that. We'll pop the camera back out, and we'll carry on with reassembly of this thing, or basically installation of the Sage chassis you guys that are popping one of these things in. So we're gonna make sure that, um, see these, these grooves inside there, which you can just barely see, correspond with this section on the receiver here. So that's how you're gonna line it up. I don't think you can install this wrong. It's a snug fit, only goes one way. There we go. So that's, that's in there now. Let's uh, throw this bottom screw in here just so that she's nice and snug and she's uh, basically secure the barreled action to the chassis. Put our hand guard back on after. Let's toss on this top cover. Which is really simple, just has these five Allen key screws to line up. Okay, let's toss our trigger group in. These again, you can see those little guides there with corresponding grooves inside the action, right, it's kind of heavy and awkward, but right uh, right in there. That's where this is gonna drop in. Again, it'll only go in one way. Also, it's gonna line up with the cutout on the receiver there. And then just pry this back down. And there you have it. Throw our hand guard on for good measure. Guys, there you have it. Quick function check. I must have uh, tightened something a little bit too tight here because my bolt is nice and she's super snug. It's looking like something on here is catching it too hard. I'm going to play with this and report back on what the problem was. Okay, so figured it out. We're nice and super slick and smooth now. I had over tightened or I don't know. I I'm not sure really why, um, but making the, the bottom screw here that attaches the barreled action to the chassis, I had it tight and it seemed to really lock up my, uh, my op rod. So if anyone wants to sound off in the comments as to why that was, I'll add it to the correction section below. And on that note, everything else in my description, I'll have specs on the gun, like weight, overall length, um, rifling if it's available, barrel length, all that kind of stuff. Um, as well as links to my Instagram, Facebook, Patreon account. Uh, if you want to support the channel, check me out there. I do some extra content for there, and you can also chat with me if you support on Patreon. Definitely appreciate my supporters. And other than that, that's, um, uh, that's the video. I've got a quick, uh, bonus gun for you guys, as always. So we'll bust that out, and then we'll call her a night. 
All right, tonight we have the Marlin Dark series of lever actions. Just picked one of these up. I think it's super cool. I've definitely been looking at this thing for a long time. We'll uh, open an action there. Really cool, really cool, really great trigger. I've um, I've thrown a Surefire trainer on here. This isn't a real can, as you can see. Completely hollow inside for us Canadians. Surefire muzzle brake that I have to time yet, but uh, pretty cool. The 336, the 3030 model, has a standard thread pitch. Basically, the whole guns are uh, they're great. I'll do a whole video series on these things soon, but suffice to say, I'm really digging it. Nice. Smooth action, great, great trigger pull, and lots of great features. I'm not really a big fan of the stocks. That definitely is going to have to get replaced with an M-Lock handguard and some other type of custom stock, um, but otherwise definitely digging it. So Also, you might want to rock set this little uh, hammer spur because after even just some dry firing and some playing with it, this definitely just gets loose, so you're going to want to... Loctite or rock set or something. Probably not rock set, just Loctite because you do need to take this off for disassembly purposes. So, anyways, that's it. That's the show. Thanks a ton, guys. Arm and gun out.